what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to another Logic Pro tutorial. I received a question in the comments and I thought this was a really good one to cover in a video. RNDev333 asks, I need to increase the sensitivity of my MIDI keyboard in Logic. Can anyone help? I find the option in GarageBand, but not in Logic. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is to use the Velocity Processor MIDI effects plugin. But if you don't want to watch my full tutorial on that plugin, I'll address just this specific issue here. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a bit. But before I get into logic, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Ska. Ska offers professional and consumer grade wireless audio products. Ska devices are neither Bluetooth nor Wi Fi, so there's no pairing and no Wi Fi network needed. Instead, Ska products are bonded together and they can permanently remember other Ska devices. So, no need to keep pairing and repairing like with Bluetooth. Need to set up a wireless monitoring system in your home studio? You can do that with a Ska transmitter and a Ska receiver. Need to set up a wireless PA system for your DJ rig? You can do that with a Ska transmitter and wireless speakers and a wireless subwoofer. You can even add in Ska enabled wireless headphones so that you can monitor your DJ set. Want to set up a whole house wireless audio system that receives signal from a small format USB or phone transmitter? You can do that too with many of their consumer products. Head over to ska.com or skastore.com to see their full lineup of versatile wireless audio products. Okay, so to start off, I'm just gonna load up one of Logic's stock piano instruments. I'll go with the Yamaha Grand here. And you know, I find that Logic's instruments tend to be scaled in terms of their velocity layers fairly well, at least for, for my playing. So let me just play in a quick example here uh, with the, the instrument as is. So yeah, in this MIDI recording, I have a wide range of velocities. I have some maxed out velocities at 127, and then I have some, you know, softer velocities in the 30s. So it's a pretty wide dynamic range, a pretty wide velocity range, and Logic's piano instruments work pretty well, in my opinion. They're scaled in a way that, that I think works for my playing. But if you're more heavy-handed, you may want to pull down some of these higher velocities and if you're more soft-handed, you may want to pull up some of the velocities. So how do you do that? Well, the easiest way to do this in Logic, in my opinion, is to use the Velocity Processor MIDI Effects plugin. This can be loaded up right here on the MIDI Effects insert slot on any software instrument. Now, the way this plugin works is it kind of works like a velocity compressor. So you have an input value and then an output value. So the input value is transformed in some way and can be lower or higher than the original input value. So if I set the threshold to one, and then I set the ratio to one, and then no makeup, you'll see that this is just linear. So one in is gonna be one out, 50 in is gonna be 50 out, 127 in is gonna be 127 out. So let's say that you're in a situation where you're really heavy handed and you wanna tame down the louder velocities. What you can do is you can pull up the ratio a bit and pull up the threshold a bit. And now what you'll see is really extreme velocities are actually going to be softer on output. You know, here we run into more of a mix problem where the dynamic is really soft, but you can barely hear it in the mix. You end up pulling up just the volume of that track as opposed to pulling up, you know, the velocities. Likewise, if I was a really soft-handed player, 
I may want to get higher velocities. I may want to make more of these soft notes uh, have higher dynamics or, or louder dynamics. And this is, you know, not just about the sensitivity of your MIDI controller, but also just the dynamics of the composition. You may decide later that, you know, this is too soft for this song, so I want to pull everything up. So you can compress the range and add makeup to it. So now you'll see that essentially your highest velocities are still going to come through loud, but the really uh, lower velocities are actually going to come through a little louder at a, a bit of a higher velocity range there. And all of these velocity processor tricks can be used while recording. So you can actually just load up this plugin, dial in a setting that fits your playing style to change the sensitivity of your MIDI controller, then hit record and you can play through the plugin in real time. And the best part is you can still make changes to the velocity processor later. Now, if you want to bake the velocity processor settings into your MIDI recordings, you can do that too. I'll demonstrate how to do that later on in this video, but it is possible. Now, I find this is even more helpful when I am using third-party software instruments. So one of my all-time favorite piano instruments is the Austrian Grand from UVI. And I love the sound of this piano, but the only thing I don't like about it is when I use it for like pop music uh, or anything other than like classical music, the dynamic range is actually a bit too wide. Uh, you know, I know that's kind of a dumb complaint to a classical musician, but for pop music, I want the softest notes to be a, a little louder. You know, I still want to hear them in the mix. Now, this particular instrument has its own built-in velocity response curve, which does a lot of the same things that the velocity processor does. For now, let's go ahead and just bypass the velocity processor. Let's listen to the instrument on its own, and then we'll play around with some different velocity processor settings. Yeah, so some of those softer notes are so soft, I could, you know, I'd, I'd never hear those in a full mix. If this is solo piano or piano and voice, fine. Um, what I prefer to do here is to use the compress mode again to sort of uh, compress the velocity range a bit, pull up the makeup gain. And what this is going to do is it's not only going to bring down the loudest velocities a bit, it's also going to bring up the lowest velocities. Now those softer notes aren't, you know, buried uh, in the mix. Another way you can work with this is if you want to make all of the velocities the same, let's say you have an instrument that's, you know, maybe not piano, but uh, it could be like a keyboard instrument or a synthesizer and it's velocity sensitive, but you want to take out the velocity sensitivity and you don't know how to do that within uh, the instrument itself. What you can do is you can use the value or range mode and here, what this lets you do is set the velocity to a fixed value. So I could set this to like 90, and now all of the velocities are going to play at 90.
Now, yet another way to use this plugin is to use it in range mode. Now, for some reason with range mode, when you load this up for the first time, the minimum and maximum values are inverted. So this actually means your lowest velocities are going to be higher and your highest velocities are going to be lower. But it's very simple, just invert these. And what you can do here is this kind of works like a velocity limiter uh, and it's a limiter for the bottom range and the top range. So what you can do is you can say, okay, I don't want any velocities below 55, for example, and all velocities that are lower than 55 are gonna be moved up to 55. Maybe I want a little bit more, let's go up to 75. Maybe I don't want those really loud notes. Let's pull those down to like 113. So now the loudest velocities are gonna come down a bit. Let's lower the bottom range just a touch more. So again, this range mode works like a limiter, whereas the compressor expand mode works like a more gradual compressor. So you can decide for yourself which mode uh, you like best. Now there's also an add and scale mode. Here you can just scale up the dynamics or scale back the dynamics. That's one way to do this as well. Or you can add a fixed amount to the velocity. So if you want all of the velocity values to be 10 or 20 or 30 values higher, you can do that as well. I'm not gonna demonstrate this one, but that is an option. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use this in real time. So if I were to make a new uh, piano recording here, a new MIDI recording, I'm going to be able to use this setting in real time to sort of alter the sensitivity of my MIDI keyboard. But let's say that you want to actually print and bake in these velocity settings while you record so that they show up in the piano roll editor. What you can do is you click here and you go down to record MIDI to track here. And what this will do is as you record, it'll run all of your MIDI notes through the velocity processor first and then record them onto the track. So let me do a, just a quick example here. So now, as I was recording all of that, the velocity processor was processing the velocity values in real time. So you can see I don't have any velocities like really lower than like the 60s. And I don't have any velocities really higher than like 112 ish. So again, this is a way to compress your velocity range and alter the sensitivity as you're playing in real time. And as long as you have this uh, little orange marker here, you actually don't have to bypass the velocity processor, but I typically do anyway. Or once you're all done making all of your piano recordings, you can just completely remove the velocity processor from the signal chain. So there you go. That's how you can use the velocity processor to adjust the velocity ranges and the velocity sensitivity of your MIDI recordings. So this plugin is just magic for MIDI piano recordings. I use it all the time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.